there is a twist actually in the presentation. You said it's about data, but the twist is it's not all about data. And that's just uh, an introduction to what I'm going to uh, speak about. So yes, I uh, work at Skype where I lead the business transformation team. Uh, and over the past year or so, we've underwent a, an extensive corporate transformation and fundamentally changed the way we conduct ourselves in the business. And what I'm going to talk about today is take you through elements of that journey, um, some lesson learned that we had, and then we put things in some sort of perspective on how to really build an adaptive, flexible, nimble organization using data and metrics. And the first step for that is you need to get your data and metrics. But what's important is to have the right context of big data analytics into the organization. Because the way we view it, big data is just another revolution. Just less the telephone, the computers, and then the internet helped streamline the operations of the business, helped us make better decisions across all levels. Big data is the same. You still need those critical business principles. You need to have the communication, the collaboration. You need to have the supporting business infrastructure for big data to really materialize on its promise. You need to marry between the data and the culture and the business. So going into Skype, when we started off with this transformation, we found out that we do have the data, we do have the technology, and we do have the technical skills to take advantage of data and metrics in the organization. But what I found in front of me were different pieces of the puzzle. So yes, we did have the big data elements that are necessary in order to work better with data. But I also need to take into consideration the other business principles to make sure that they're in place. We needed to know what the culture is, what the, that the collaboration is there, the transparency is there. We also needed to make sure that we take into consideration the strategy of the firm and that any sort of transformation has that objective in mind. And also, very importantly, we needed to know where are the gaps. Where are the gaps in capabilities that we need to enhance? And where are the gaps in capabilities that we need to build from scratch? And once you have all that, once you've completed a really intimate due diligence of your company, of your organization, you could really plan ahead and understand how you could tailor that transformation to the specific need of the organization. So the first few baby steps of this transformation had nothing to do with data. We needed to make sure that we have corporate sponsorship and support of this transformation. Because when we talk about changing the way we work, I mean that word itself, transformation, applies to everyone across the organization. It couldn't be just a tangent IT project. It really needed to relate to everyone and we needed to be center stage. Uh, Two, two. No. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to interrupt. Now, when you come to my living room, you have to act like a rock star, because we're all rock stars here, and you have to hold the mic like this. <laughs> there you go. And then everyone can hear. Carry okay. on. No worries. Um, by the way, those uh, footprints, by the way, are my son's contribution to this presentation. His other contribution was keeping me up a while. Is that better? So the next thing we did after we made sure that we have that corporate support, that sponsorship, um, was to make sure that we have the branding and the marketing and the right perception in the business about this transformation. And that was very important because you could have all the data and all the technology and all the tools and dashboard and everything. But if you don't have stakeholder engagement, if you can't incentivize and motivate the people to work differently and change their habits, into a better, more faster business rhythm, then we're not gonna get anywhere. So it was very important to get that engagement. And one element that we worked on in order to get that engagement was to tell to people, this is not just for the benefit of Skype or the organization. This is to your benefit as well. So whether you stay in the company or go anywhere else, you need to equip yourself with the modern skill sets that are required in any sort of business in order to get more engagement across the organization. Then we looked at data. What was important over there was to make sure that the data is in the right format, that everybody could access it. 
So it is true that nowadays a lot of non-technical people across the organization have the technical skills to extract data in multiple sources using different codes, but that doesn't apply to everyone. So if you want people to use the data in their decision making, you need to make it accessible for them. And another point over there is design. Many times we focus a lot on design for our external customers. Yeah. But in many cases, if we want to get that engagement, you need to make that design also to internal customers. Because if something looks good, if something is appealing, then people will use it. If something is simple, it's intuitive, then people would use it. The same customers externally are the same customers internally as well. And if you could have that mindset, then you could really get the adoption that you need um, across the, the business. Now, what lied in the center of all this transformation was our metrics framework. And that was really key because, as others alluded before me, you really needed to make sure that the strategy doesn't stay with selected few at the top. It really needs to trickle down to the entire organization. And a good way of doing that is to have those common goals, common metrics, and common understanding of your business. So if you take the example of the different functions that we have over here, marketing like campaigns, product wanted new features, and engineering wanted to more streamlined operations. What these three groups didn't know is that they all wanted the same thing, they just communicated differently. The metrics was what helped them understand that they all want the same thing and they're speaking in the common language. And that really helped not just with these three groups, but across the wider business and across the wider uh, company. So, question to you guys, some participation. Who brushed their teeth this morning? Raise your hands, please. Come on. Mike? <laughs> Okay, I'll give you another chance. Did you brush your teeth last night? Anyone? Everyone? Well, well, you know I brushed my teeth last night, darling. <laughs> I mean, don't yeah. you remember? Yeah, that's my fault. That's my fault. <laughs> and last question, who plans to brush your teeth, let's say, during lunchtime? No one, huh? Now, why is that? That's one. The other element is routine, right? It's not built to our routine to brush our teeth three times a day, even when, that we know that it's good for us. We brush our teeth twice a day. Now, if you take that analogy into data, we needed to do the same thing with data. It had to be part of the routine of the business. People needed to use data, whether twice a day or three times a day, it doesn't matter. It had to be built into the routine. Now, we did it in two ways. The first way, is if the frequency of decision making across the business is a week, two weeks, two months, or a quarter, we need to make sure that the data would be available at those time frames as well in the same frequency. And the other element, if the decision makers look at the business through different cuts, lenses, we need to make sure that the data cuts the same sort of way. Thus bringing the frequency of the routine of the data to the same rhythm and frequency of the decision making, bringing them closer together and then changing the culture of making or basing our decisions not only on intuition and common sense, which are important, but also on hard facts and data. So once you do all that, once you understand and do a proper due diligence of the organization, you know where the gaps are, and you go through this transformation, you could actually have great benefits. And I'm not just talking about save time and streamlined operations. You can really change the culture and the habits of the people. You could actually have real measurable business benefits shown on the external metrics that part of your framework. And a key element of knowing whether this has succeeded or not is when transformation actually becomes business as usual. And with that, I'm done. Thank you very much.